Um, and a 1981 member of the Gay Liberation Against the Bike Everywhere, Blair, and also a lesbian and gay Pride Day committee. We also have, after Gary, we will be uh, hearing from Sabra Desai from Women Like Freedom. So bring up Gary! I am so glad to be back at Grange Park. I was here in 1981 when we started this whole history of celebrating the Stonewall riots against police repression in Toronto. I'm going to first of all just give you a little bit of a time travel, I guess, experience in terms of the histories we need to remember that the gay establishment and Pride Toronto always wants us to forget. As mentioned... Uh, touch base a little bit about what's been happening in Iran in terms oh. of the Xinjiang Azadi revolution and kind of like uh, connect it back to like solidarity uh, in general. It has been 10 months since the murder of Gina Amini by the brutal regime of Iran, an unfortunate event that shook all corners of Iran. It's a disaster that turned the anger and grief of our people into a powerful tool for mobilization. Despite continued oppression and killing of the people of Iran by the regime, especially in Kurdistan, Baluchistan, and Ahwaz, they have been protesting and dedicating their lives to freedom. It has been 10 months since the Xinjiang Azadi revolution in Iran, a revolution that spoke to so many of us as women and queers in the region and beyond, a revolution that has sparked an imagination for our future that is different than anything else we expected. The most marginalized people of Iran came to the street to demand justice for Gina, but also to demand justice for all. Since September 2022, we have lost so many lives to executions, have seen so many of our friends behind bars. Iran's prisons are the backbone of their oppressive system. Iranian intelligence services and cops have been brutally killing, arresting, and torturing people. But despite of and because of all of these horrific events, we see resistance. We see we see resistance. We see, uh, sorry, I lost my, uh. <laughs> we, see, we see resistance. We see people coming out and risking their lives and their loved ones in an unequal war. The same way the Kurdish female guerrilla fighters are fighting in the mountains of Kurdistan. The ones who chanted, Jin, Jian, Azadi, women, life, freedom, years ago in Kobani, while fighting ISIS, a fascist force that was supported by so many dictatorships around the region, or at least won't challenge. These women have been saying this chant since those days. Just standing here, remembering my trip to Qandil Mountains in Iraq with the female guerrillas, and sometimes hiding in the mountains because Canadian-made drones were flying over the Iraqi border while being controlled by the fascist government of Turkey. Shame! Shooting some of the Havals, comrades in Kurdish language, who ended up in the hospital, thinking, what is my role as someone who's a settler in Canada and see all these cr crimes being committed by this system, not just in the indigenous land that they colonize, but in other countries, and mostly the ones who are the closest to me and my peoples as homes. A system that simultaneously wants to control, restrict, and commodify identities and trick us into believing that identities are not solidarity with identities, identities but not solidarity with unite us and liberate us. Okay. Thinking about how I can take the Xinjiang Azadi from mountains to the cities, to my community, and what place better than here, a community that I'm proud of, the community that remembers what queerness is about and what was the history of our queer, anti-colonial, anti-imperialist, anti-fascist, anti-capitalist, abolitionist past and what can be the future. Here and with you, I can envision
envision a future in which the freedom, freedom of women and queers in Iran goes hand in hand with the freedom of indigenous and black people all around the world. A future where workers unite against bosses and states. A future where Palestinians are free and back in their lands where olive trees are free to grow. A future where all of our struggles are understood to be intertwined. The corporate pride and rainbow flags with cops in the streets reminds me again of how freedom for some is not necessary freedom for all. How even in a community that is supposed to unite us in our pain and suffering as well as a struggle, we still tend to go towards the easier idea or the path of least resistance. This is a fake freedom that brings comfort for some and exclude the most marginalized of our community to whom we owe our existence now and in the future. Let us keep building our movements and solidarity to ensure that we fight to win. An injury to one is an injury to all. Thank you so much, Gary and Saber, for your powerful words, reminding us of our history and also the importance of international solidarity. So up next, we have Indigenous Drumming by Toronto Indigenous Harm Reduction. Please give them a warm welcome. Thank <laughs> you. 
one of the founders of Unity Kitchen here that recently uh, said Mama P to their program. Uh, we stand alongside them and we are so grateful for them in the community and uh, thankful for the person who held my baby today. So, miigwech, naha. Big round of applause for Toronto Indigenous Harm Reduction. Very much awesome. Uh, so now we are going to be leaving the park for our march. Um, we are lucky today to have the K-Pass drummers. They will be drumming us out of the park and we will be beginning our march. So I would like to welcome the K-Pass drummers, please. Thank you.